Among various metrics used to evaluate classification models, accuracy, precision and recall are some of the most commonly used. In this video I will explain each of these. We will explore these metrics using a spam detection example. Emails are classified into two categories, non-spam, often called HAM, which are normal emails and spam unwanted emails. I will mark regular emails with a standard envelope and spam emails with an envelope containing a virus icon. In our spam detection task, non-spam is the negative class and spam is the positive class. A spam detection model predicts whether each incoming email is spam or non-spam. Predictions can be classified into four possible outcomes. First, a regular email correctly identified as non-spam by the model. We call it true negative, since model correctly identifies the negative class. Second, a regular email incorrectly classified as spam. And this is false positive as model made mistake with positive prediction. Third case is a spam email correctly identified, so this is a true positive. And last case is false negative where a spam email is incorrectly identified as non-spam. And I will use colors to indicate model's predictions. Blue for negative, non-spam and red for positive spam predictions. Imagine that 10 emails arrive in our mailbox, 7 regular and 3 spam. An ideal model correctly identifies all emails. However, let's assume that our model makes some mistakes. For example, our model correctly classifies 6 regular emails, mistakenly classifies 1 regular email as a spam, misses 1 spam email and correctly identifies the remaining 2 spam emails. The first metric, accuracy, is very common. It measures how often model predictions are correct overall and is calculated as the number of correct predictions divided by the total number of predictions. Correct predictions are those labeled true, that is the true negatives and true positives. In this example, accuracy is 8 correct out of 10 emails, so 80%. Next is precision, measuring how often model is correct when predicting positive class. That is, how many emails predicted as spam were actually spam. It is calculated by dividing true positives by all predicted positives. Here we have two correctly identified spam emails and one false positive, giving a precision of 2 out of 3 or approximately 67%. The final metric, recall, measures how many of the actual positives model finds. In our case, how many spam emails it correctly detects. So, here we focus only on positive class elements. And recall is calculated as true positive divided by all actual spam emails. In our case, the model identifies 2 out of 3 spam emails, giving a recall of 67%. To summarize, accuracy measures overall correctness while precision measures the accuracy of positive predictions, reflecting how reliable a spam alert is, and recall measures the model's ability to find all positive cases, so how many spams we catch in our case. And higher values for all these metrics mean better model performance. Why it's often worth using these metrics together when analyzing model performance is best to explain with an example. Suppose we trained three models on our dataset. Each model made two mistakes, so accuracy is 80% for every model. As precision is accuracy of positive predictions, first model managed to correctly label two spam mails out of three labeled as positive, so precision is 67%. Second model made only one positive detection and it was the correct one, so precision is 100% here, the highest possible. And the last model correctly labeled 3 spam emails out of 5 positive predictions, so it works with 60% precision. 
Third metric, recall, is ability to find all positive cases. So we look only on spam emails. And first model found two out of three positive elements. Second one only one. And last model found them all. So what all these metrics tell us about model performance? Each model has the same accuracy, but they work differently in practice. Using first model as a mailbox spam detector, 67% precision means that some regular mails will land in spam folder, and we will have to check this spam folder from time to time to look for them. And while recall is also 67%, not every spam mail is detected, so some unwanted mails will make it into the inbox. Second model has 100% of precision, so we don't have to worry about mislabeled regular emails and don't have to check spam folder. But due to low recall rate, many of spam emails get through our detection system and land in our inbox. So this model when detects spam, detects it perfectly without false positives, but does it quite rarely in general. And third model detects all spam existing, which 100% recall tells us about, but it predicts spam so often that sometimes even regular mail lands in spam folder. Finally, let's quickly practice interpreting these metrics. Suppose a model has 70% accuracy, undefined precision because the denominator is 0, and 0% recall. You can pause the video for a moment and try to determine model predictions here. This scenario occurs when the model labels all emails as non-spam. It gets a high accuracy simply because most emails are indeed regular, but it fails completely at spam detection. It simply doesn't work and it's equivalent to having no spam detector at all. And we still get 70% accuracy here. This highlights while multiple metrics are essential, especially for imbalanced datasets when one class occurs more frequently than the other in a dataset. In practice, as there are positive samples in our test set that model just missed, we can assign value 0 to precision instead of not a number as well. And I presented all these metrics in a percentage format here, but it's worth to know that we can use a decimal format with 0 to 1 range as well, and this format is commonly used in machine learning and data science. In conclusion, accuracy can be helpful, but precision and recall are crucial for understanding model performance in practical scenarios, especially with imbalanced datasets where accuracy can be high due to predicting majority class and totally missing minority class. These metrics can reveal whether our model is genuinely effective at classifying critical cases, such as detecting spam emails, identifying fraud, or diagnosing illnesses. Thank you for watching.